In 1962, while most of America was obsessed with big muscular V8 engines, Buick took a bold direction by building a V6. Not because they wanted to be pioneers, but because they had no other choice. Buick needed a fuel-efficient engine that was small enough to fit into the growing trend of compact cars. And so, the 198 cubic inch V6 engine was born. It was the very first V6 engine produced by General Motors. Initially dismissed and forgotten after just a few years, it would later become the foundation for the legendary 231 cubic inch and 3.8 liter engines that General Motors relied on for over three decades. You are about to discover the strange and fascinating story of an engine nearly buried by time, yet one that continued to live on in another form. The Buick 198 V6 is proof that sometimes an imperfect idea can spark a lasting legacy. By the late 1950s, the American automotive industry began facing unpredictable changes. On one hand, fuel prices were starting to fluctuate after the Korean War. On the other, younger buyers were increasingly drawn to smaller, more fuel-efficient vehicles that were easier to handle in the growing congestion of American cities. Foreign cars like the Volkswagen Beetle and Renault Dauphine started winning over the middle class. Meanwhile, domestic automakers scrambled to release their own compact models. Ford introduced the Falcon. Chevrolet brought out the Corvair. But Buick, known for building large, luxurious vehicles, had nothing truly compact to offer. This placed Buick in a difficult position. As a premium brand, it could not afford to release a car that felt cheap or underpowered. Yet it also could not ignore the booming compact segment. To solve this dilemma, Buick needed an engine that was small, powerful enough, and affordable to build. This challenge forced the company's engineers to think differently. The solution was not born out of inspiration, but necessity. Buick chose not to start from scratch, but to adapt existing resources to create an engine suited for the moment. It was a survival strategy, not an innovation campaign. And from that difficult moment, a brand new chapter in General Motors engine history began to take shape. A chapter named Buick 56. Buick did not build from scratch. Instead, they adapted the architecture of the 215 cubic inch aluminum V8 engine. To reduce production costs, they replaced the aluminum block with cast iron, which was cheaper, easier to mass produce, and more tolerant of varying fuel quality. The revised configuration featured six cylinders arranged in a V layout with a 90 degree angle. This was a carryover from V8 design and not ideal for a V6, which typically benefits from a 60 degree layout for better balance. This compromise led to increased vibration, especially at idle and low speeds. However, the payoff was strong, low-end torque, suitable for stop-and-go driving. The engine used a traditional overhead valve setup with a single camshaft in the block, push rods, and rocker arms operating the valves. Ignition was managed by a mechanical distributor and coil, making it fully mechanical and easy to tune. Fuel delivery came through a single-barrel carburetor, a standard system in the early 1960s. Key specifications included 198 cubic inches of displacement, a 9.0 to 1 compression ratio, approximately 135 horsepower at 4,600 revolutions per minute minute, and peak torque of nearly 205 pound-feet at 2,400 revolutions per minute. Though simple, this design offered a practical solution. Powerful enough, compact, and well-suited for the expanding compact car segment. But once Buick vehicles equipped with the 198 cubic inch V6 hit the road, user feedback rolled in quickly. 
and most of it centered on one thing. The engine vibrated, not in a faulty or uncontrollable way, but in a consistent mechanical fashion that was especially noticeable at idle or low speeds. The issue came from the 90-degree V6 layout, which lacked natural balance. Buick had not yet implemented a balance shaft or any advanced vibration reduction methods found in later engines. As a result, drivers could feel the engine's pulses through the frame, the steering wheel, and even the seats. Still, it was not all negative. Some drivers described it as a raw mechanical experience that modern engines had lost. The engine's strong low-end torque provided quick throttle response, especially useful in city traffic and hilly terrain. In the end, the Buick 198 V6 was not for those seeking silky refinement, but for drivers who appreciated a lively feel behind the wheel, where every shake reminded them of the machine working beneath the hood. This engine delivered a uniquely vivid driving experience from the early 1960s. Once finalized, the Buick 198 engine was quickly installed in the company's early compact offerings, primarily the 1962 and 1963 Buick Special and Skylark. These were entry-level models with a touch of Buick's signature luxury. With the new V6, the brand aimed to offer a fuel-efficient option without sacrificing too much power. In practice, the engine met the market's growing demands. It was lighter than a V8, easier to fit into compact engine bays, and provided enough torque for nimble urban driving. It was not powerful by muscle car standards, but it was just right for a compact car, which mattered more as American tastes began shifting from large to practical. The biggest surprise came from Jeep, then owned by Kaiser, which expressed strong interest in the engine. Seeing its potential as a lightweight, torquey, and easy to maintain power plant, they negotiated with General Motors to acquire the entire production line by the late 1960s. From there, an expanded 225 cubic inch version of the engine began appearing in Jeep CJ and Wagoneer models. Although it initially met market needs in the early 1960s, the Buick 198 was discontinued after just two years. This abrupt decision has raised questions ever since. Why phase out an engine that was functioning well? The answer lies in three key areas. Customer experience, product strategy, and internal competition within General Motors. First, despite delivering solid low-end torque and dependable performance, the engine drew frequent complaints about excessive vibration at low speeds. While other GM divisions like Chevrolet and Oldsmobile continued using smoother inline-six engines, Buick's choice of a V6 earned it a reputation for being cost-conscious rather than premium. This clashed with the brand's identity centered around smooth, upscale driving. Second, Buick quickly developed a larger version, the 225 cubic inch V6, to improve smoothness and torque. Though based on the same core design, it featured a longer stroke that enhanced power delivery and reduced harshness. Replacing the 198 cubic inch displacement with the 225 cubic inch displacement was viewed as a natural progression that did not disrupt existing engineering platforms. Finally, General Motors was pushing for platform consolidation and clearer brand distinctions. Buick had to choose between refining the V6 or refocusing on V8 engines for its premium segment. And they chose the V8, ending the Buick 198's journey early, even though it still had untapped potential. But the story of this V6 engine did not end there. When Buick ceased production of the 1980 V6, its entire manufacturing line sat idle at the Flint, Michigan facility. At the same time, 
American Motors Corporation was searching for a compact, torquey, and easy-to-maintain engine for its Jeep lineup, especially the CJ and Wagoneer models. After several rounds of negotiations, AMC purchased the entire production line from Buick in 1967 for approximately 8 million United States dollars. Rather than keeping the original 198 cubic inch size, AMC modified the engine to increase displacement to 225 cubic inches by lengthening the piston stroke. This version, known as the Dauntless V6, became the standard engine for Jeep CJ5 and CJ6 models from 1966 into the early 1970s. In harsh off-road conditions, where durability and low-end torque mattered more than refinement, the Dauntless V6 proved highly reliable. It was significantly lighter than comparable inline-six or V8 engines, easy to repair even in remote areas, and strong enough for hill climbs, water crossings, or light towing. As AMC was getting the most out of the 225 cubic inch V6 in Jeep vehicles, General Motors began to realize that they may have abandoned a valuable asset too soon. The oil crisis of the early 1970s forced American automakers to revisit fuel efficiency, and suddenly, compact engines like the V6 returned to the spotlight. In 1974, General Motors repurchased the rights and tooling for the V6 engine it had previously sold to AMC. This move was not just a strategic shift, it was a rare admission of error in the automotive world. Buick took back control of the production line, re-engineered the design, and introduced a new version, the 231 cubic inch V6. The 231 version featured several key upgrades, optimized piston stroke, higher compression ratio, more advanced ignition, and significantly reduced vibration. More importantly, Buick no longer saw the V6 as a temporary solution, but as a long-term strategy. The 231 became a core engine across many GM vehicles from the late 1970s through the 1990s, even spawning a turbocharged version for the legendary Grand National. Though its lifespan was brief, the Buick 198 laid the foundation for General Motors' entire family of V6 engines that followed. Not because it was flawless, but because it introduced a new philosophy in engine design. Compact packaging, low production cost, strong low-end torque, and high-volume manufacturing potential. Building on this platform, the 225, later the 231, and eventually the 3.8-litre V6 evolved into a widely adopted engine across dozens of GM vehicles. From the Buick Regal and Chevrolet Monte Carlo to the Pontiac Grand Prix and Oldsmobile Cutlass, it powered coupes, sedans, SUVs, and minivans alike. Its adaptability made it a workhorse throughout the GM portfolio. Even more impressively, the turbocharged version of the 3.8-litre V6 used in the Buick Grand National and GNX proved that a V6 could be more than economical. It could be powerful, fast, and a legitimate rival to traditional V8s. Technically, the most significant legacy of the Buick 198 was the 90-degree V6 layout that became standardized and refined over time. The development of balance shafts, electronic ignition, and multi-point fuel injection all stemmed from the need to smooth out this original architecture. Without the Buick 198, there would be no 231. Without the 231, there would be no 3.8 Turbo Legend. And in the broader view, this engine family became the ancestor of many modern GM V6 designs that lasted well into the 2000s. That is why, within the classic car community, Buick models powered by the original Buick 198 
are increasingly recognized as important technical milestones. It does not deliver outstanding performance or the thunderous sound of a V8, but its raw mechanical simplicity gives the Buick 198 its own place in history. Classic car enthusiasts are not chasing speed, they seek connection. And with a compact Buick that shakes and rumbles at idle, the challenges of American engineering in the early 1960s come alive once again. Vehicles that still run this engine are seen as truly authentic. Restorers do more than just replace bearings or polish cylinder heads. They work to preserve the single-barrel carburetor, mechanical distributor, and that unmistakable engine rhythm. At forums like V8 Buick and local car shows, you might still find a 1962 Skylark firing up slowly but proudly. Owners are not showing off horsepower. They are showcasing originality and honoring a piece of history that even Buick once tried to forget. But let us flip the question. In today's world, could the Buick 1988 have a practical place if brought back to life? From a technical standpoint, this engine would struggle to compete in a modern context. With its low compression ratio, lack of fuel injection, no balance shaft, and high emissions output, it would fail to meet today's strict environmental and fuel economy standards. Producing a factory original version for commercial use would be nearly impossible. However, in the world of restoration and resto mod culture, the Buick 198 could be reborn. With upgrades like electronic fuel injection, electronic ignition, and modest improvements to the combustion chambers and camshaft, the engine could become smoother and more efficient while preserving its vintage mechanical soul. More importantly, as electric vehicles begin to dominate the market, the craving for authentic mechanical experience is growing. Reviving the Buick 198 would not be about profit, it would be about passion, a tribute to analog craftsmanship. If rebuilt thoughtfully, the Buick 198 V6 could become a neo-vintage icon, bridging mechanical heritage with modern curiosity. The Buick 198 V6 is not a legend in the traditional sense. It did not win races, produce jaw-dropping power, or enjoy a long production life. But it was the beginning, a foundation stone for an entire generation of American-style V6 engines. From a stopgap solution, it became the basis for the 225 cubic inch, 231 cubic inch, and later the 3.8 liter V6, a family of engines that served General Motors for more than three decades. And though forgotten for years, today it is being restored, appreciated, and retold by the classic car community. If you found this engine story worth remembering, leave a comment below. Have you owned a Buick V6? Do you have memories of machines that shook like a tractor? Feel free to share and do not forget to subscribe so you will not miss the next nostalgic journey.